While many have come and gone from this corner of the wrestling sphere over the years, each of the following stars from out of this world British bellends to potential megastars of tomorrow have yet to make their presence known on WWE programming and likely never will. Gareth here from What Culture Wrestling, and here are 10 wrestlers you'll never see in WWE. Number 10, Sammy Guevara. It very much feels as though Tony Khan is hell bent on shaping his company's future around compelling youngsters like Sammy Guevara. And while each of AEW's four pulsating pillars, for example, are still all below the age of 30, they've each remarkably been given countless opportunities to shine on All Elite programming already. It doesn't seem as though the Spanish God is in any rush to kiss goodbye to the land of All Elite either. With his only real tryout with WWE back in 2017, souring him on the idea of being a part of their landscape. As he'd explain on the Talk is Jericho podcast, it felt that if you want to do this for a living, F you. But these models, ex-football players, they treated them really good. And almost shame on you for actually wanting to be a wrestler. And whilst Sammy would utter the always diplomatic, maybe not ever, when discussing not wanting to be in WWE. The company's recent obsession with bringing in green collegiate athletes seems to suggest Guevara won't be treated any differently if he were to entertain their advances today. Number 9. Danhausen The never indifferent reaction that often greets the face painted menace that is Danhausen suggests Tony Khan won't be in too much of a rush to part ways with the Merchant of Curses anytime soon. And even if he did, it would not be wise to put your money on the former Ring of Honor star rocking up inside of a WWE be ring later down the road. Despite definitely skewing more towards the entertainment side of pro wrestling, Danhausen's divisive shtick generally hinges on the star being able to riff and bounce off of whatever poor personality is stood before him. As you're likely more than aware of at this moment, the freedom to improvise and live on the edge a little is all but non-existent in the wrestling juggernaut at this current moment in time. Though it's more likely McMahon would take one look at Danhausen's smaller frame and quirky presentation and let out a trademark belly howl before either feeding him to Bron Breaker on NXT 2.0 or just straight up rejecting the chance to bring him aboard. Number 8, Anthony Agogo. The fact Anthony Agogo isn't exactly down with the way Vinnie Mac's company goes about their business ultimately cost them the chance to rebrand him as Colossus Onyx or something. Back before the governor was officially made All Elite, the British Olympic bronze medalist was offered a deal by WWE that consisted of more money than what TK and the gang were offering the boxing sensation. But as he'd explained to Wrestling Inc's Nick Hausman, the Gogo didn't join the WWE machine because he believed in Tony Khan's vision. Going further, the factory star would throw further shade at the competition by admitting, the other place, they seem to care about money first and people if at all. We care about other people first because they know that a happy workplace creates good stuff. So despite WWE's best efforts, it seems as though this particular former amateur superstar will not be joining up with old pal Cody Rhodes in the coming years if he can help it. Number 7, Nick Aldis. NWA man Nick Aldis has forged quite the career for himself despite not making his presence known in either WWE or AEW. It must be said that the former NWA and Impact World Heavyweight Champion wasn't always completely against the idea of pushing to sign for the global wrestling leader in particular though. But after years of trying to chase that specific dragon, it eventually became apparent that Aldis wouldn't ever be given that opportunity due to a successful person within WWE not wanting him there. As the one-time gladiator explained during a chat with Chris Van Vliet, there is somebody there who is very successful, who for whatever reason and decided that he didn't want anything to do with me. And with Aldis turning down the chance to sign with AEW, due to Tony Khan wanting to have him turn his back on his NWA commitments, along with agreeing to re-sign with said company earlier this year, it seems as though this NWA cornerstone is more than happy to keep flying his current promotions flag for the foreseeable. Number 6, Thunder Rosa. It may be hard to believe given the fact she currently sits as AEW's reigning women's world champion and is frequently found putting on absolute bangers against the likes of Serena D, Britt Baker, and Tony Storm. But there was actually a time when it looked as though Thunder Rosa's days as an active in-ring worker may have been numbered. In fact, with the star finding herself in the tough position of constantly having to scrap for bookings, exposure, and money a few years ago, Rosa would later admit to almost accepting an offer from WWE to come aboard as a referee instead of as a full-time wrestler. As the former MMA fighter would reveal to Sports Kida, when you are, again, in need of a job and you're tired of hustling, when you're tired, when you feel defeated, sometimes will call it, trying to sell your soul to the devil, right? The fact Rosa equates this particular offer from the wrestling giant to turn her back on her in-ring career to selling her soul to the devil tells you all you need to know about how the current AEW star views Vinnie Max Empire. Number 5, Will Ospreay. Easily sitting as one of the most eye-catching talents currently setting the wrestling world on fire. It's still remarkable to note that Will Ospreay has yet to ever sign a deal with one of the more notable Western wrestling organizations in the game. It isn't for lack of trying on 
WWE side, however. On top of admitting that he was once contacted by the company in regards to potentially joining up with the biggest wrestling promotion on the planet, but turned down the chance due to being happy with his life in Japan as part of New Japan Pro Wrestling. The loudmouth Brit would also recently note to Rest Things Podcast, I have no aspirations of going to WWE at all. It's not because of the product or anything, I'm not a fan of it, I will happily say. But my lifestyle, I never wanted to be the big star pro wrestler. And with Osprey now being able to have his cake and eat it too with AEW's New Japan Pro Wrestling Partnership, giving him the chance to perform on a high-profile US stage, it looks like any hopes WWE had of one day luring him into the world of sports entertainment appear to have been emphatically extinguished. Number 4. Jay Cargill WWE are by no means lacking in the ridiculously talented women of wrestling department at this current moment in time. But you can all but guarantee that already possessing said sea of brilliance still hasn't stopped WWE's recruitment squad from sending a few flattering glances towards one specific member of Tony Khan's All Elite roster, who looks poised to become one of the next breakout stars of her generation. As it goes, WWE actually initially sent an offer the current undefeated TBS champion Jay Cargill's way, before she eventually agreed to become All Elite. However, after passing up on a 100-page contract from Vinnie Mac's organization, Cargill would explain on Talk is Jericho, the other company was pissed off that they sent me this 100-page contract, but I made the best decision for my family, and I made the best decision for myself. I mean, look at me. I don't think I would be anywhere close, so I just know I made the best decision coming to this company. Feeling much more than just a number whilst honing her craft in Tony Khan's promotion, it seems as though WWE's strange questioning of Cargill's commitment to wrestling may have cost them the chance to ever present that bitch on their product. Number 3. Santana and Ortiz With the pair's time with Impact Wrestling coming to an end in August 2019, news of the two biggest players in the North American wrestling game both trying their utmost to convince Santana and Ortiz to join their rosters became very much public knowledge. Clearly sensing just how valuable the electric workers could be to them, WWE in particular was said to have aggressively pursued the tag team to the point of telling the lads, write your own ticket and we'll make it happen. However, despite that tantalizing deal being on the table for the one-time LAX members, Chris Jericho's desire to recruit the duo to his incoming inner circle faction within AEW proved to be too compelling an offer to turn down. The pair had both studied and bonded over Jericho's alliance tail book, so aligning themselves with Le Champion was a no-brainer. Similarly to the likes of Will Ospreay, the intense WWE schedule also didn't exactly appeal to the unit, with the idea of not being able to properly take care of their families pretty much guaranteeing that a life on the relentless road with WWE won't ever be for them. Number 2. Orange Cassidy Few characters have resonated in quite the way the lovable layabout Orange Cassidy has since arriving on the AEW scene during the company's inaugural Double and Nothing pay-per-view in 2019. Despite this being the first time many were exposed to his casual superkicks and penchant for sticking his hands in his pockets though, Cassidy had actually been sort of working his ass off on the independent circuit for the better part of 15 years coming into his All Elite bow. But proving that the cream still has a funny old way of rising to the top, Oh yeah. The former Shikara Fire Ant now sits as arguably one of Tony Khan's most prized assets. And while WWE would likely give anything to possess a character as undoubtedly over as Cassidy is with the younger demo at this current moment, you may be surprised, or not, to hear that Freshly Squeezed has never even found himself on Vinnie Mac's radar. Cassidy's admission of I never tried out for WWE during an AEW unrestricted appearance in 2020 speaks volumes about the way he was and probably still is viewed by the competition. It's safe to assume he'll likely stick to kicking back in the land of all elite until he decides to slink off into the sunset then. Number 1. Kazuchika Okada Quite possibly the greatest wrestler working today and perhaps even of all time, Kazuchika Okada has long been on the radar of just about every wrestling promotion worth their salt. And with wrestling icon Shawn Michaels being quick to note how the Rainmaker would adjust fantastically should he ever decide to sign on the dotted line with Vinnie Mac's company. However, with Okada very much being New Japan through and through, not exactly relishing his last stint signed to an American promotion in TNA, classing it as hell, and even openly admitting to Rolling Stone back in 2015 that he was not interested in WWE at all, deciding to kiss goodbye to his beloved New Japan in favor of a venture into sports entertainment feels about as unlikely a development as it gets. And with Okada now being free to simply dip his toe back into the high-profile Western TV waters like he did at the recent AEW New Japan Pro Wrestling Forbidden Door pay-per-view, all the money in the world probably won't be enough to persuade this legendary and fiercely loyal worker to make that much-discussed WWE move.
And that's our list of any other wrestlers you'll never see in WWE. Let us know all about them in the comments section right down below. And do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. Also, if this kind of thing is your bag, then head on over to whatculture.com and find some more incredible articles just like the one this video you're watching right now is based on. And I would know because guess what? I, I wrote it because I do that too. I've been Gareth from What Culture Wrestling. Thank you as always for clicking on this video today. I hope to see you very, very soon. But in the meantime, be good to yourself.